When we look at measures of relative standing, one of the um, types of measures of relative standing that's very helpful starting with and then further down the road is something called the z-score. Now a z-score tells you how many standard deviations a particular data value is away from the mean as well as what side of the mean it is. So when we look at the number of standard deviations that a number is away from the mean, we'll get values for our z-scores that we can also get a general impression of whether that data value is, is an um, ordinary data value from a population or whether it's an unusual data value from that. Now, if we have an ordinary data value, one that is what the majority of the distribution has, those will have z-scores that are anywhere between negative 2 to positive 2. So numbers that fall from the span of two standard deviations below the mean to two standard deviations above the mean are pretty much anticipated data values out of our data set. If we have any data values that have z-scores that are either bigger than two, so are more than two standard deviations above the mean, or a z-score that's smaller than negative two, two standard deviations below the mean or more than that, then those are unusual values and we want to make sure that we identify it that way. Now within this example, we're just going to practice how to change from what are called the raw scores, the scores of the specific data set, into the z-score, the value that tells me how many standard deviations that raw score is away from its mean. So here we have men's heights in the United States have a mean of 69.0 inches and a standard deviation of 2.8 inches. Find the z-score of, or for, each of these three values. Well, let's start by saying what our z-score formula is. To find the z-score for a particular data value, you take the number you're changing minus the mean of the distribution, and you divide it by the standard deviation of the distribution. And that will give you the number of standard deviations your value is away from the mean. So for part A, our z-score is, our number we want to change is the 67.2 inches. So we have 67.2 minus the mean of the distribution. So here, the mean is 69.0, so minus 69.0, divided by the standard deviation of our data, and here our standard deviation is 2.8. Now make sure that if you calculate this all through your calculator in one setting, that you open the parentheses at the beginning of your fraction bar and close the parentheses at the end of it because the length of a fraction bar is a grouping symbol and you want to make sure to enter that information so that the calculator takes it that way. So if we enter this by opening a parentheses 67.2 minus 69.0, close our parentheses and divide by 2.8, we'll get the same as if I actually did this out by hand. Taking our 67.2 minus our 69.0 is a negative 1.8 divide by the 2.8. And then when we divide that out, our z is approximately equal to a negative 0.64. And just rounding that to our two decimal places. Now let's do the second part b. Here we want to take a height of 74.3 inches and change it to its z-score. So our z is equal to the number we're changing, 74.3, minus the mean of our data set, 69.0, divided by the standard deviation of our data set, 2.8. So then we get that that's equal to 5.3 divided by 2.8. And when I take the 5.3 divided by the 2.8, I have about 1.89. And then the last one, part C, Z is equal to the number we're changing, 68.0, minus the mean of the, dis of the data set, 69.0, divided by the standard deviation of the data set, 
So that gives me a negative 1 over 2.8. So we get about a negative 0 0.35. Now, looking at these, you can also see how we can kind of have a little bit of a um, common sense aspect to make sure that we are on the right track with this. The z-score for our data value of 67.2 came out to be a negative 0.64. Well, 67.2 is smaller than the mean, so it's to the left of the mean on a number line if I put numbers in increasing order. So it's smaller than the mean, its z-score came out negative. And if I took my 69.0, and subtracted one standard deviation, subtracted off just a 2.8, I would be at a 66.2. So I'm not quite one full standard deviation below the mean, and that's what it came out as. I'm at a negative 0.64, not quite one standard deviation below the mean. So it makes sense that I got that for the z-score. For my 74.3, we look at our mean of 69.0. 74.3 is bigger than the mean. So I should be able to get, or I should be getting a z-score that's positive, which I did. And when I look at what I got for my z-score, it's a 1.89, which makes sense that my 74.3 is more than one standard deviation above the mean, but not more than two standard deviations above the mean. So I got a z-score that's between there. And then the final one, my 68.0 is smaller than the mean, 69. So again, I got a negative z-score for that value. So just to recap, we have our z-scores are the number of standard deviations and direction away from the mean that our data values are. If I have just my ordinary values out of my data set, I should be getting z-scores that are somewhere between negative 2 and positive 2. And if I have values that give me a z-score that's smaller than negative 2 or a z-score that's bigger than 2, then those are unusual values for my data set.